Welcome to Daily Armor. Today, finally today, I am in Romans 8.37. And finally here, um, I will have to say that I am not here with confidence, um, but I am here in spite of my fears. Um, I've not arrived, I've not conquered anything yet, um, because I have totally got it wrong of what that meant. And the Lord is showing me through this study in Romans chapter 8 and also um, lining it right up with what the preacher is preaching during our revival this week. Um, I'm just awestruck of how the Lord works all of it together, Romans 8, 28. He, he uses all of it in combination with everything else. I mean, he's the, you know, he's the only one that can do that. He is designing it. He is orchestrating it. He is in control of it. All of that, the God, God is doing, not me. Um, but let's get to our scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. I may be a little bit all over the place this morning. I have like um, five scriptures um, uh, in addition to this. But I don't know if the Lord will let us use all of them, but um, let's just get on with Romans 8, 37. And it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Nay, in all these things. What things? What things? Well, that's what we've talked about previously. Um, if you look up there in verse number 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? So in, in verse number 37, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. He's saying, no, none of that can separate you. None of that um, makes a difference in God's economy. None of that affects um, what God wants to do. What is that? That is that tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. All of those things that go on in our life that can happen to us and sometimes all at the same time, sometimes it's not just one thing, um, sometimes it's all at the same time. Um, God is saying, you know, it doesn't matter about all those things. You are more than conquerors. See, I was real bad to say, you are, I'm more than a, con I'm more than a conqueror. I, you are more than a conquerors. I'm, I was bad to just dwell on that part of the verse. We have to be so careful. Sometimes we'll pull out just a little piece of the verse that we want. And I think in my mind that I was doing that and leaving off the most important part through him. John 16, 33 says that I have overcome the world. Not me, Jesus. He has overcome the world. I can, I'm more than a conqueror over these situations, over all this stuff that is scary and fearful and and, uh, you know, mentally oppressive and just damaging and just exhausting. That he's, and I'm more than a conqueror over these situations, not because of my ability, but because of him, through him that loved us. Because he loves us, because that he came and he died to forgive us of our sins. And then once we accepted that free gift, then we belong to him. I belong to him. Because I belong to him, then it's because of him, not because of me. See, I've been trying to do a lot of things on my own. I've been trying to say, oh, I got that. I can handle that. I can't. I can't handle it. You know why? Because let's look at the description. I want you to notice, if you go back, right back up to verse number 36, I want you to notice how God, what God compares us to. Um, verse number 36 says, As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. What does it mean to be accounted? Um, in the context of this verse, it's to um, literally or figuratively to take an inventory to, to get an estimate, to, it's a comparison. Um, it says, um, it's, it's making a comparison. And look, I like this. It was in a Thayer's Dictionary definition. definition. It says, as having like force and weight. <laughs> so I'm like a sheep having like force. 
I'm not compared to a horse. A horse is strong. A horse can, can uh, the horses can get excited in my back pasture, which right now we just have the one, and um, one of ours died um, just a few weeks ago, and it, it just broke our heart. But when the horses get excited, they sound like thunder. Like if I holler for them, um, if I, you know, knock around on the feed bucket and they're feeling a little perky, they can come like thunder. I shared this with you not long ago about um, couldn't find Moose and I needed to give him his medicine and, and Moose is who passed. He didn't make it. And uh, I'm not going to get weepy. Um, but this one night that we had went out and our power was off and we couldn't see and we took our flashlights out there and I had to give, we had come in super late from church and I had to give Moose his medicine and I was hollering for him and I absolutely couldn't see him and, but then I heard him and it absolutely was boom, boom. It was like thunder. He was, he is strong. And even in his weakness, he still mustered up enough energy to run to go get fed. He ran with such force, and he was really so close to death. And even in his weakest moments, he still had strength. I'm not compared to a horse that even when I am really, really, you know, dealing with a mass in my lungs and I can barely breathe, that I can muster up enough energy to thunder through the pasture to get to the feed. I'm not compared to that. You're not compared to that. We're compared to a sheep. A sheep has no defensive mechanisms. There's nothing they can do to defend themselves. They are absolutely without ability. They don't have claws. They don't have sharp teeth. They don't have quills like a porcupine. They don't have spray like a skunk. They don't have venom like a snake. They don't have anything. I don't have anything. But what the sheep does have is a shepherd. And what I have is the shepherd. What you have is the shepherd. And we don't have just any old shepherd. We don't even have somebody the shepherd's hired. We have the great shepherd himself. So we are compared to sheep because God wants me to understand you are defenseless against the enemy. And I'm not talking about the enemy that might be a wolf or a bear or a lion. I'm not talking about one of those kind of enemies. I'm talking about the real enemy. And we all know who the real enemy is. I am defenseless against this enemy. You are defenseless against this enemy. I'm directionless. I don't, if I get back into a corner by the enemy, I'm like, I don't even know where to go. I don't even know. I mean, if I get pinned up, I, there's nothing I can do about it. If you get pinned up, there's nothing you can do about it. But God says we're more than conquerors. Well, how? How am I more than a conqueror? Through him, through the shepherd, through the Lord. That the beginning of the revival this week on Sunday, the preacher that's preaching the revival, Brother Mike Suffin, he took us to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, I've read this many times. I have I, I go to this, you know, throughout the year a lot. Um, and it really, really sunk in even more so personally to apply it to my life. Um, I want you to listen as I read Numbers chapter 13, and I want you to listen as I read verse 31. It says, But the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Okay, this is the spies. There's 12 spies that went out, one from every tribe, to go out to spy the land out. God said, send, send some spies out there. Let them go see let them go see what it is. Let them go see what I've promised. We're here. We're here. We're been traveling, been waiting. Now you're finally here, and I want you to see it. And what they see is people that were bigger than them, cities that were 
walled and fortified and looked absolutely unconquerable. What they saw was a land, like just as God promised, flowing with milk and honey, but it had the enemy, and the enemy was absolutely bigger. They were giants. So if, you know, the average person, like I'm an average height, I'm just kind of like, like right below, just barely um, under five foot six. I'm just of average height. But um, I've got many, even many women friends that are much taller. Um, one of my, one of the people that's just super, super sweet in my life is, is my accountant back home in North Carolina. And she's like six foot tall. She is really, really tall. If you are an average sized person and you're looking at these people that are just so much taller, so much bigger, and I'm going to say they were like giants like Goliath. Goliath was a super giant person. He was just humongous. I can't remember if he was like seven or eight foot tall or nine foot tall. I don't remember the height of him, but he was super humongous. And the people were, that they're looking at these people like that, that they are super huge, massive, big. And then they compared them to their selves. Sometimes I'm comparing the enemy to myself. And God's not telling me that I'm like a sheep because he wants me to be afraid. He's telling me that I'm like a sheep so I will get, quit trying to go do it myself because I'm not going to I'm not going to make it. If I'm a sheep, I'm not supposed to go after the wolf. I'm not supposed to go attack the bear. I'm not supposed to take on that line. I'm a sheep. I don't have anything. I don't have no fangs. I don't have no claws. I don't have no means to to take on anything like that. And God is telling me, you cannot do this yourself. You have to do it through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, through God the Father interceding. And he's got power over all of those situations. Over what? Go back to that verse number 35. He's got power over whatever tribulation, Whatever distress, whatever, whoever is persecuting you, he's got power over them. I don't, you don't, he does. Whatever famine that we go through, and I went through some famished times. Never one time did God leave me hungry. I always, always had some kind of means of provision. Whatever nakedness, whatever's been exposed, whatever you're being exposed to, um, whether what, whatever it might be, whatever peril, come absolute danger is the a peril to be in perilous times to go through a peril that is danger that is life threatening, and then sword. Somebody's going to go to war at you. Somebody's coming at you with a sword. If somebody is coming at you or coming at me with a sword, I'm a sheep. I have not got a defense against a sword. You don't have a defense against a sword. We're sheep. But God's saying we're more than conquerors. Get it, Teresa Gale. Get it. We're more than conquerors. Why? Because of him. Not because of me. I've been trying to do so many things on my own. And he's saying, but you can't. You're just a sheep. But you're a precious sheep. And you're a cared for sheep. And you're a loved sheep. And you're an adored sheep. And... I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to help you. And you're more than a conqueror because of what God can do. I am more than a conqueror because of what God is going to do in my life and in my situation. So I don't want to be right there on the brink of my victory and say, Lord, it's too scary. I'm afraid. I should be afraid. I'm just a little old innocent sheep and I can't do it for myself. But he doesn't want me to be afraid because of who I belong to. He wants me to just, just, just to wait, just to stand there, just to do go where God leads me. He's going to lead me to that ground where I need to be grazing at. He's going to lead me to that still water where I can get a fresh drink of water. He's going to lead me to where I need to go, and I don't need to wander off on my own thinking, oh, I got this. I don't. I don't have this. 
I don't have this. And as I'm doing this devotion, as I began this devotion, I mean, I was just fear filled with anxiety because I'm like, Lord, I don't have it. I don't have it figured out. And the Lord's saying, exactly, you're exactly right. You're finally getting it. You don't have it figured out. You don't have it. But you rely on the one who does. He's got it. And I'm just so thankful. I'm just so, and and some of the scripture that I've wrote down is about being about being thankful. First Corinthians 15, verse number 57. But thanks be to God. Let me go to that. Verse um, chapter 15, first Corinthians chapter 15. But thanks be to God. It's just, oh my goodness, but thanks be to God. Let me find it here. Verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, giveth us the victory. That giveth us the victory. How? Not because I'm a sheep. I ain't going to get the victory because of my abilities. Give us up the vic give us up the victory. I'm getting tongue-tied. Giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling very thankful. I'm, I'm wanting to conquer some things. And I've been trying to do it myself. And God said, no, you don't have it. You're not supposed to. You're just a sheep. You're just defenseless. And you know what I think about? Like, why did he make us so defense, defenseless? Because he knew how big the enemy was that was coming up against us. And he says he gets more glory out of taking us that are defenseless and getting the victory in spite of it. And he's he's given a good old saw, a punch to the mouth to the to the enemy for us. I'm not. He is. He gets the victory. And I'm going to give him thanks. Thanks be to God. When, which goeth he, he giveth, or he giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through my Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, he's your Lord, and he's going to handle it. He's going to take care of it. He's the one that is caring. He's the great shepherd, and he cares for me, and he cares for you, and that's why we're more than conquerors. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.